Hello students, welcome to the answer writing program. Today we will be discussing two questions from GS4, Probability in Governance and one question from Current Affair. Let's take an overview of all the three questions. The first question is related to probability and why it is an essential part for the effective governance system and the socio-economic development. Then second is related to the involvement of the civil societies and the public participation and its role in the transparency of the service delivery. The third question which is related to the current affair, it is about the crypto assets and what are, is the current status of crypto regulation in India. So let's start with the first question. The very first question is, probity is essential for an effective system of governance and socio-economic development. Discuss. So the question is related to probity and it is asking that probity is essential for two things, for effective governance and socio-economic development. So our answer would have two main body parts that probity in effective governance and probity in the socio-economic development. So in introduction, you can start your answer with the definition of what is probity. You can write that probity is about adherence to the ethical and the moral standards like moral values like honesty, integrity, etc. You can also relate it with the context of the question. Context is setting probity with respect to governance system and about the socio-economic development. So you can also write that probity is an essential part or the foundation for the good governance and the sustainable development. You can also write about the reverse statement that the absence of the probity or the absence of the ethical conduct in the governance system will lead to the mistrust, it fosters corruption which leads to the lopsided growth. By this line you can directly linking it with the demand of the question that how if probity is not there it leads to the lopsided growth not the holistic or the comprehensive socio-economic development. So this way your introduction would be there. Next comes to the body part that importance of probity for the governance system. Now we understand that probity is about the adherence to the moral and the ethical norms or the value system. So when there is a probity in governance or the governance system or the government, people will have a full faith in their honest government. People would know that whatever the government is doing, they are adhere or the comply by the ethical standards. So this probity in the governance system enhances the public trust. Second is it ensures the effective or the efficient governance. How? When there is a probity in the governance system, it looks for the larger public interest and when they see for the larger public interest, they also will take the feedback. They also do the maximum public good. So people will also take participation in the governance system. They will have the good faith in their government. So this would ensure the better service delivery. And when there is a better service delivery, there is a efficient and the effective governance. Next is when the property is there in the financial administration, it ensures the optimal resource utilization. It means then when the governance is ethical and adhere to the moral values, it means they will not do anything which is wrong, which is corrupt, which is along the lines of the bribery. So, there would be the optimal resource utilization, not via some leakages or the corrupt practices. Then next is probity in financial management, it reduces the wastage. Then next is when there are the ethical and the moral standards in the governance, it means they fosters competition, fair competition, fairness. So it promotes innovation, it in, uh, promotes knowledge based society. So these are the importance of property for governance. Next comes to the second part 
then what is the importance of property for the socio-economic development when there is a property in the governmental system in the private institution it means the there is a more of the transparency everything is accountable to the people everything is transparent that whatever their workings actions deeds policies schemes whatever is there what their intentions are so it appeals the investors to invest in the economy or the country so it attracts the investment that leads to the socio economic development then next comes the driving economic growth how when there are the less leakages less corruption or not corruption no corruption would be there no leakages there no bad or illegal practices is there so it all leads to the economic growth boosting or promoting economic growth then next when there are the optimal utilization of the resources when the resources are best utilized and they are more targeted they are especially for the vulnerable group whosoever demand the government is giving it to them not on the basis of the favoritism or just for the corrupt practices so it reduces the opt, uh, it enhances the optimal utilization of the resources and it reduces the transaction cost it reduces the logistics cost then next comes the fostering knowledge economy again uh, when there is a fair competition there is no nepotism no favoritism uh, no corrupt practices no recruitment of the people who are dependent on the like bribery or the corrupt practices so when there is a property it means it fosters the knowledge based economy it leads to the socio economic development next comes the challenges what are the challenges in ensuring property as the keyword is discussed so we can write about the challenges also in ensuring property how some governmental system or the agency or the private institution at when uh, are the situations when these agencies or the institution do not uh, comply or do not uh, stand by the ethical standards and the moral values so what are the challenges in that the very first thing is the gaps in laws and policies why gaps like there are some laws like we promote rti that enhances the transparency but again there is a osa official secret acts that enables the lack of transparency again there are the uh, political funding issues there is a lack of transparency where the fund is coming from where and where the fund is going so when there is a lack or the gaps in the laws and policies it lacks the property it hampers in ensuring the property next is lack of effective audits and disclosures there are lack of effective audits disclosures especially for the higher officials and the politicians so this again as a challenge in ensuring property next is poor public service delivery and redress redressal system when there is a poor public service delivery system it means there are the leakages like before pds or dbt what was the case there is a, a huge leakage uh, uh there is a the famous saying 85 paisa conundrum of rajiv gandhi our prime minister ex prime minister so he said when 1 rupee is uh, uh, devolved from the center only 15 paisa reaches to the actual beneficiary so there are the huge leakages again when there is a poor public service delivery and there is no grievance redressal mechanism it means there are the scope of the corruption and the bribery prospects then comes the inadequate enforcement of the existing laws and rules why there are the inadequate enforcement due to the capacity gaps due to the pendency in the judiciary whosoever are the uh, stake holders or in ensuring the property then next comes the limited use of technology if we use limited uh, if we use the technology uh, at a very higher pace it means it enhances the transparency everything would be digital it ensures the accountability it ensures the inclusiveness also but there is a limited use of technology so this is the challenge in ensuring property next comes the politicization and erosion of autonomy of investigative agencies there are the huge impact of the executives on the investigative agencies 
and when the investigative agencies they do the investigation of the government official there would be the conflict of interest or there would uh, they will not uh, stand on the complaints or the reports against the public officials so it again is the challenge in ensuring probity honesty and integrity of the officials next is ineffective electoral and the judicial reforms then next is limitation in the public awareness there is a lack in the public awareness activism movement of the civil society organization that they can make accountable that they know their rights and uh, their duties towards the, uh, their countries so they can ask for their rights from the government and when they are not getting delivered within the time limit they can also raises their grievances and there should be grievance redressal mechanism Uh, for the time bound delivery of the services of the public service but there are the limitations in the public awareness they do not know about the citizen charter they do not know about their constitutional rights they have the limited knowledge uh, that they can exercise their constitutional right that they can take part in the decision making process and the developmental process of the country so these are some challenges in ensuring probity finally comes the conclusion so in conclusion we can write some solutions for ensuring probity and you can also write that what is the importance of probity in the governance and socio economic development uh, just in a summarized form that uh, we need robust mechanism for accountability transparency and strengthening uh, ethics so as to ensure the probity impartial enforcement and severe consequences for the wrong doing can help promote integrity and uh, directly probity in the governance system so this was our question let's see the model answer first they are defining about the probity then importance of probity for the effective system of governance then comes the socio economic development then what are the challenges finally conclusion let's see the second question the involvement of the civil societies and public participation is a key tool for transparent service delivery discuss so the question is about civil society and the people's participation or the public participation and the question is saying that this participation or the involvement is very much required it means it is a key tool for the transparent service delivery system discuss so we need to write how what is the role of this means we need to tell about the role how this ensures the transparency in the service delivery so you can write in intro just directly what is the importance of the civil societies and the public participation that when the civil societies and people participate in the governance process it ensures accountability transparency the governance is more inclusive and also government or the government uh, governmental agencies would have the diverse outlook because of the multiplicity of the active citizenry so uh, government will also have the diverse perception or the outlook on the different governmental agendas or the policies or the schemes so this would be our introduction next comes the body we need to write that how the civil societies and this makes the transparent service delivery the very first thing is when the people or the public participate in the governing governance process it means now the civil society organizations or the people they are now the active participant of the governance just not the passive recipient of the public services or the delivery or the schemes or the benefits from the government they are now acting as a partners what it is mean partner means they are now acting as a stakeholder it means now they have the say they have the avenues to take part in the decision making process now they have the constitutional right in the decision making process decision making process and also the developmental processes of the government or the country now they are acting as a partner and when we are the partner to something it means we have a say in the decision making and when we have the say it means the, everything is now more transparent because we are asking from the government and government is also telling us that what everything is going on so now the 
delivery system or the services delivery are more transparent now next is when the civil societies and the public involved in the decision making process it what it do it gives the feedback to the government and government also have the avenues to understand what the citizens require they now understand also try to meet the demands of the people and when the people will give the feedback and also requires what they demand it means there is a more efficient and the effective delivery system it means enhanced governance next comes increased delivery system this we have done uh, second is tailoring services to the community needs now they can actually tell what that particular community or the section of the society requires they can demand from the government now the government will not do the helicopter approach everything same for everybody now different communities can directly come to the government and demand their uh, needs next comes the equitable distribution when the people have the say in the governance process and when they participate in the governance they, when the system is more transparent then they, this ensures or fosters the equitable distribution of the services now the governance can be more target based targeted especially to the vulnerable se section or the susceptible people next comes the when the people participate it means they are holding service providers accountable now when the uh, service providers or means the governmental agencies and the governmental institutions they are accountable to the people it means everything is more transparent now and when they are more accountable there are the very less chances of uh, corruption and the bribery aspects so this is the first part of the body now comes the conclusion in conclusion you can write about the summary that key uh, very major role that the civil society and the public participation they have the major role in the ensuring transparency and the accountability of the governance aspect so you can write about in the just a summarized form let's see the model answer first they are telling about just the introductory that uh, they make the government or the governance more accountable responsive and inclusive then involvement of this is a key tool how we have already done and finally conclusion in conclusion they are also saying that engaging people is very crucial for achieving transparency and accountability in the service delivery and we need to collaborate more among the civil society organizations public bodies and citizens which is a very must thing these measures now this will ensure the fair equitable and effective delivery of the public services let's see the third question what are the crypto assets this is the first demand explain the current status of crypto regulations in india so in introduction you can start with the definition of the crypto assets now what are the crypto assets assets like the physical assets financial assets there are some digital assets which are available digitally so crypto assets are the subset of the digital assets that use cryptography as the tool to secure the data which is available digitally and also this uses the distributed ledger for storing or the transactions of the uh, various data online so these are the crypto assets you can also quote examples like uh, bitcoins like cryptocurrency non fungible token uh, fungible token etc so you can write about the crypto assets example you can also write some advantages that they have the potential for the cheaper and the faster transaction of financial uh, accounts also and the data also uh, examples we have already done so in introduction you can do this next comes the body about the crypto regulations in india so what are the different provisions first we can divide it into the legal provision what the rbi is saying what are the different regulatory frameworks for that what are the different taxes what the union uh, budget is saying what the finance minister is saying so we need to write it in the crypto regulations what are the different regulations available for the crypto assets in india the very first provision is related to the legal provision so all the administration of the crypto assets is done under the prevention of money laundering act 2002 so the crypto assets holder they have to do the mandatory kyc uh, processes they have to comply by it and they have to report the suspicious activities related to the cryptography online 
Next comes the what is the RBI stand on this? Initially, RBI was very reserved for this uh, crypto assets. Uh, RBI was of the view that it can risk, it can put the risk on the financial stability. But uh, and later on, it imposed the ban on holding of the cryptocurrencies or the crypto assets. But later on in 2020, uh, Supreme Court has lifted this ban. Next comes the regulatory framework. So, finance minister in 2022, uh, she has proposed a digital rupee. Digital rupee means state, a country bagged uh, digital currency. And the uh, finance minister also said that there would be the regulatory framework for the private cryptocurrencies. What would be that uh, regulatory framework? DCRA, Digital Currency Regulatory Authority, that this body would oversee the cryptocurrency use in India. Next comes the tax regime 2022. So, last year, union budget has officially classified all the digital assets as the virtual digital assets and the cryptocurrency is also the subset of the digital asset. So, it means it comes under the ambit of the virtual digital assets and virtual digital assets and according to the income tax act flat 30 percent tax would be levied on the crypto asset transfers with additional 1 percent tds then you can also write about that this is the status of crypto regulations in india and there are some other uh, regulations abroad or uh, globally what are the best practices you can also write this the very first thing is imf fsb synthesis paper International Monetary Fund and Financial Stability Board, they have come up with a report that says that the proliferation of the crypto assets, they would put the risk on the financial stabilities of the country. So, there should be some regulations, maintenance, legalizing or there should be put some stringent regulations on this crypto assets. First, you can write this. Second is Mika framework. European Union has separately come up with their crypto uh, currency or the crypto assets uh, regulation framework. So, this is a first ever cross jurisdictional framework for the management, licensing, collection and everything related to the crypto assets. So, these are some practices uh, globally going on. Finally, conclusion you can write about in the summary that we need to put the proper or the effective regulations for the crypto assets so as to maintain the financial stability of the country also and to ensure the financial or the effective regulations on the cryptocurrency first there should be the financial awareness about the crypto assets what are the risks associated with that what are the benefits so that people would not get uh, just they would not get suffer from all the negatives of the crypto assets. Next is the international collaboration. There should be some international standard or the framework for the crypto assets so that the flow of the crypto assets should be regulated or uh, uh, there should be some regulations or the standards that how should this be flow. So, this was the conclusion. Next comes the model answer model answer crypto assets the definition crypto regulations in india you can also make some flow chart or the diagram like what is the need for the crypto regulation ensuring the stability in the crypto market when there is no law it means there is a void of law it means everything can be done so to need to regulate the crypto assets we need to ensure that there should be the stability in the crypto market next is protect consumers from the fraud next is largely unregulated asset category is it is this so there should be some revenue generation uh, from the crypto assets transfer that is why our government has also put 30 percent tax income tax on the crypto assets transfer next is address component of the tax avoidance money laundering etc finally international best practices and finally conclusion so this was our three answers for the day what we are doing in the november month we are doing ethics module and we will be completing 12 case studies till the last of this uh, November and you can write your answers on this portal and you can see the videos and get the model answer attached in the description box. This is a free course. You can make the maximum benefits out of this. Also, Vajiram and Ravi has come up with mains intensive test series for 2024 you can be mains fully ready in a holistic and the comprehensive way because we have the multiple half length sectional and multiple full length test. So, uh, this test series comprises of the 38 uh, test papers. So, you can subscribe for that. 
this has already started from the 19th of November. So you can use and make ben maximum benefit out of this. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day and keep writing. Thank you.